Hi, Natalie. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Pril. Hello. 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 Good morning. Good evening. Depending on where you are. Where are you checking in from? Where is everyone coming in from? <laughs> we have Canada. We got Canada. New York. Turkey. Turkey. And Florida. Florida. Yeah, I think Dave is connecting from, uh, joining from Florida. Um, we, got, we got Rhode Island in the house. We got Florida in the house. We got Canada in the house. It's going to be an international workshop. Yeah. <laughs> international. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Look at everybody here today. This is wonderful. It's coming to our time. I'm so glad that uh, we have lots of people today joining us today, coming together. You know, when we come together in community, when we come together, uh, our energies work together. Our energies grow together. When we come together collectively with intention, intending love for ourselves, intending love for each other, right? When we come together with intentions of love, with intentions of health, with intentions of wellness, right? With uh, intentions of, of really striving for our very best. This is what this lifestyle is about. Natural healing, natural health, breatharian lifestyle, raw food life, fruit life, energetic waters, high energy waters, right? Light, that natural energy, energy of the mother, right? Energy of father, son. Right? We're talking about changing our, our nourishment, adjusting our nourishment from nourishment from food to, to lighter nourishment, to, to, to nourishment from the light or from the natural energy that is here. And what is the natural energy? It's light, it's love, it's breath, it's earth, it's water. It's current, it's electricity. This is the energy of nature. Current, light, love, hope, passion, right? These are the things we're talking about. Love, we're talking about passion, we're talking about light, we're talking about community, we're talking about coming together in community. When we come together in, as a collection, we bring our energies together. And everyone, everyone is a part of that. And everyone has value. And everyone's voice is important. And I hope everyone will take, take time to share or comment on the things that we talk about today. I think it's a time in human history where we have to come together like this. This is what we this is what needs to happen is we need to have we need to have healing. We need to have community. We need to have togetherness. We need to have intentions of love. We need to have intentions of health and wellness and love. We need to hold those intentions in our mind more often. Right? Whatever we're we're holding in our thought garden is what we're creating. And breath has an enormous part to do with that. Whatever we're holding in our thought garden while we're breathing, this is what we are creating into our reality. We need to stop creating from a fear place. We need to start creating from a whole place. Humans need to come together and recognize our wholeness 
see our wholeness is within us. See that the power to heal is within every one of us. The power to heal, the power to be well, the power to love ourselves and to love our brothers and sisters. That's a power that's available to every single human. And it's a power that I think is, is necessary now. Community, love, intention, healing, tuning inside the self, tuning out the outside, and learning how to tune into the self, into the inside, listening to the voice within, right? And the breath is the foundation of this. Watching the breath, coming to the breath, observation of the breath takes us out of the busy mind, out of the programming. This is the practice, to come out of the program and to come into the inner world where we have a singularity, a common space, a oneness, a, a collective energy, a human energy. There is one collective, loving, starting initiative force that creates all things. And this energy is within every single one of us and available to every single one of us. And we can all grow it in our lives. And it grows from attention. It grows from intention. It grows from focus. Wherever we put our focus on grows. We put our focus upon love and joy and happiness and health and healing and wellness, then this is what will grow for us. It's an important time for all humans to learn how to focus within and how to focus naturally on the natural things. This is love, love is the nature to come back to the natural program, to come back to the truth, to come back to the light, right? To return to nature. And if you look at nature, nature is light, nature is earth, nature is breath, nature is fire. Nature is earth, nature is breath, nature is wind. Nature is supporting us all the time. It's always here for us, it's the breath. It's available with every single breath. So I think it's wonderful to just come together as a community and breathe together to start things off, just, just so that, that, we can, that we can all be in, in the same place, in the same moment, together, in this now. And each moment is, is separated by a breath. So, so collectively coming to the inhale and the exhale together is a wonderful way for us to all come together and be in the same now, to share this now together, to share this loving moment and opportunity together. Right? Let's just let's just watch our breaths for a couple of minutes. Let's work on just deepening and slowing down our breath just to begin things together. Let's just take a couple of minutes to just all breathe collectively, to all focus together on our inhale and our exhale breaths. Let's try and see if we can do, let's try 10 focus. Inhales and exhales. If everyone could just focus in on their own love and light within themselves, their own life force energy, their own breath, their own sustenance. If everyone could focus on their own sustenance for 10 inhales and exhales, just so we come together collectively in, in an energetic space together to share 
some information today. Just breathing. If everyone could just tune out the outside by just closing your eyes and just tuning into your inside by watching your own breath. Just by observing your own inhale and exhale breath. This is just bringing yourself to the moment, bringing yourself to now. Just, just collecting ourselves together with a breath to start the day. We're just going to practice five inhales and five exhales. See if you can tune out the thoughts in the busy mind. See if you can tune out the programming in the mind. And see if you can tune in to just now. To just the breath. To just the present moment. Just observing your breath now. In love and care for one another. and image in mind, imagination. Just breathing together and opening our little circle today, Saturday afternoons at 2 p.m. If you need a community to talk to, let's do that. Saturdays at 2 here. You're always welcome. This is a little home base, but I hope we can create a community, a place where people can always come to share and talk and discuss natural things. And then if everyone is in the same focus space, then I think it would be a wonderful time for Duche to tell us a little bit about herself. I know her a little bit. I've spoken to her a couple of times now. Very inspiring story and message. And I'm glad she's here with us today to share a little bit about who she is why she is doing the things that she's doing and saying, why she's living in this way, why is she conducting herself this way? Sure. Can you share? Can you share with us today, Tuche? Yes, of course I can. Um, first of all, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for saving up this time for yourselves and for us. Um, during the meditation, I set up an intention to honor your time and transfer everything as much as I can, uh, everything I know and that has benefited me along my own journey so that you can, um, you know, get there as soon as you can. I mean, it's all, all it's not the destination, of course, it's the journey, but um, I wish I knew the things that I know today, like seven years ago in the beginning of my journey. So yeah, my intention is just um, to bring along this information and love and light energy to all of you. So yes, thank you all so much for coming. And so yeah, my journey, my healing journey started around seven years ago. 
Um, by the way, for those who don't know me, my name is Tuche Zalolu. I'm originally from Turkey, Istanbul. I moved to New York when I was 25 and I've been living here for around uh, nine, 10 years. And um, so after I moved here, um, well, it, my health journey actually started in Turkey. I was going through um, lots of um, different ailments that, you know, um, people in white coats <laughs> diagnosed me with, um, such as, I'll give you some names that they gave me, like hyperglycemia, insulin sensitivity, hypothyroidism, um, PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, and... Um, what else? Hypothyroidism, I said that. I had acne, irregular periods. I mean, so many different uh, symptoms and so many diagnoses. And so I was uh, pretty much um, spending my life from like going from one doctor to the other. I was on medication, uh, pharmaceutical medications for around 10 years. Um, but I was always like searching for answers and you know, looking out there, what I can do holistically and so on. So seven years ago, um, just Googling, um, YouTubing <laughs> how to better my health, I came across with some um, raw vegans uh, who looked so healthy, happy, vi vibrant, and I decided to um, change my diet. I also watched some documentaries uh, related to veganism and so on. So they were also a big effect on my life. Um, and so, yeah, seven years ago, I changed my diet from a standard American diet or a standard Mediterranean diet uh, to a raw vegan diet. And just the change of food, um, the energy that I was consuming, just changed so much in my life, not only physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. Uh, from then on, I just kept discovering more and more and so many changes happened. So um, I think it was the first four years when I kind of healed my insulin sensitivity, hypothyroidism, um, those main things. But then there were still some things that I wasn't healing from. Um, um, such as the PCOS, irregular periods, acne, they were still lingering and I still had symptoms from those. So I was still asking, you know, for more answers and so on. And that's when I came across the book of uh, Armstrong, Water of Life. Um, and um, I found someone on YouTube named Andrew Norton Weber, um, who was talking about distilled waters. And, and from then on, I feel like my world just opened up even more. And um, I, I feel like, especially with the urine therapy, orin therapy, I stepped into a whole new world and I will be talking about it in my presentation. But from then on, um, I healed so much more. And up to that point, I was, uh, you know, trying everything like 90 day juice fast, which helped me heal a lot, but still I had like things that were still lingering and not healing. And, um, but after the four day urine fast, which is just drinking your own urine and looping it, uh, I healed almost everything that was still lingering. <laughs> um, it was truly magical and, um, and it, it wasn't even the first time that I started getting benefits from oral therapy. I started it four, um, four years ago. And the, the first month I was just drinking just one cup a day. And just by drinking that, just one cup in the morning for a month, after a month, my periods were regular totally synced with the moon, no more PCOS, no more irregular periods. Um, my whole system just, you know, came back to itself to homeostasis and um, everything um, started healing from then. But then um, the more I started drinking, uh, like first I was just drinking a cup and then I started drinking more, a bottle a day, couple of bottles a day, looping, fasting, and the more I consumed it, the more benefits I got. 
And that really opened up my mind to thinking, okay, we're actually, our bodies are 25 to 80% water and we need to replace this water in our bodies with clean, high structured water so that we can be the most healthy versions of ourselves. And um, so, yeah, I'll be talking more about each therapy that I did more in detail uh, in my presentation. But yeah, since then, um, I can just say that right now I'm 34 years old and I'm healthier than I've ever been. I mean, probably like, because my issues started when I first got my period, I think around 14 years old. I had acne, like irregular periods, this and that. I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism when I was 21. I always had adrenal, adrenal fatigue, never had the energy to exercise or, um, you know, I mean, I, I would exercise. I, I was in the volleyball team in high school and so on, but still like I wasn't as energetic and vibrant as I am today. Now I just sleep um, four and five hours. My body needs less and less rest every night. And um, I get up totally rested. I go for a bike ride every morning. I do my yoga, Pilates, uh, meditation, breath work. Um, all these you know, healing modalities helped me so much. And yeah, I'm, I'm like my healthiest right now. <laughs> and I'm so happy about it. And I just want to transfer you all the uh, knowledge and the energy about this all uh, in case you're not already practicing. Um, I know um, we have some friends here, maybe coming off uh, of standard diets. Uh, some are already breatharian, raw vegan. And, um, but I hope you can all find some information uh, in the presentation that is going to be helpful for you um, or maybe just going to be a reminder for you. So yes, yeah, should I start it? <laughs> and, and by the way, oh, sorry, go ahead. Please get started, sure, wonderful. Yeah, so um, yeah, and if you have any questions, please um, type it in the chat box or just write it down. And then at the end, we are gonna be making a Q&A session. So I wanna be able to answer uh, all of your questions if you have any. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay, can you all see it? Thumbs up. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm a holistic health coach and a certified detox specialist uh, by Dr. Morris's school and also an iridologist, uh, which if you don't know, iridology is the science of reading the eye pupil to figure out what's going on in the body. Um, is there any way I can like push this? Um, oh, well. Um, oh, okay. I'll put this here so I can, so you can see the screen. Oh, it's not allowing me. Oh, I go sideways is better. Okay. All right. So, um, John already touched upon this. I mean, we are all uh, energy beings. We are all light beings. Um, human, the name itself, Hue, is light. Men, and we are all light beings. And um, and every living thing and every food has its own energy, right? And today we can measure this energy uh, with the Kirlian photography and the energy waves that every living thing and food is vibrating with, emanating. Um, so this electromagnetic energy is rated in units called angstrom. And I'll be talking a lot about this because I think our healing, our emotional health, mental health has so much to do with this energy. I mean, it's, it's a lot to do with food and our thoughts and our emotions, but they're all actually unified under this angstrom energy. So um, I want to start with Nikola Tesla because I think he figured it all out. <laughs> and I think his quotes uh, even uh, can be used, you know, in terms of uh, detoxification and health. So one of the things he said, if you want to uh, find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And this is what I uh, want to base my whole detoxification on because it's it's got so much to do with it. And the other thing 
he said electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities and can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other of the common fuels. I see this as being a breatharian because we don't even necessarily need the, um, the food, the vegetables, the fruits, and the, um, the animal flesh or um, whatever is out there to survive. I believe that we are self-sustaining self beings. And um, like my friend Jerome says, the energy is all around us, the prana is all around us, and we can tap into that prana anytime we want. We are already tapped into it. Our breath is our energy. And, and that's how the breatharians today live without you know consuming any uh, foods, drinks, juices, nothing, just by off of air and opening up their energy channels to transmit the, uh, the energy from the universe into their bodies. So yeah, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. So when we look at um, a healthy person, uh, they measured that um, they usually ar have around 6,500 angstroms of energy. However, when we look at a uh, patient who has some types of disease, especially a cancer patient, has around like 4,875 angstroms. It just goes lower and lower on the scala. Um, so healing is holy. I believe that we are already perfect the way we are. We, are, we have this consciousness within us that knows what to do. Like if you cut your skin by mistake, you know, the body knows how to heal itself. You're not telling your skin to go and get the blood uh, cells over there or nothing. The body is already doing it. It's what it needs to do. It already has the consciousness in itself. And I love Rumi's quote on this, where he says, uh, you are not a drop in the ocean, but you're the entire ocean in a drop. We are the entire consciousness in this body, in this temple that we have. And we are made up of water. We are 75 to 80% water. And, and the energy within this water is so crucial. Because as you can see here, the same kind of water uh, when it's polluted, its its form is so deformed and looks ugly and like um, not it's scattered. It doesn't have any specific shape to it. However, when the same water gets energized, it becomes this beautiful structured um, shape, and um, it's emanating so much energy. So. Um, where was I? I'm sorry. Um, hydrating the body with distilled waters is incredibly important because um, the distilled water, as it in its in its thing, it's its name, this still. So it's it's not still. It has its own energy, and um, it come when whenever it's ingested, it cleans up the body. It's, it works like a vacuum cleaner almost and it goes into the cells and cleans up all the junk, the impurities, and um, it bring, it helps the body's water to uh, get energized and get structured. So also in my opinion, um, unless you are really well hydrated, you'll always be hungry and have cravings. And being hungry is actually being dehydrated. So when you um, are using more of these distilled waters, your own water or distilled waters, fruit juices, veggie juices, you're, you will realize that your hunger slowly goes away as you're more hydrated and you become more structured and your need for other sources just become less and less over time. So this is something that my husband, Jason, always says, and I love it. So I wanted to add this here. Uh, you know, we always hear you are what you eat, but you are also, especially what you don't eat, what you don't consume. Um, there are a lot of um, low vibrational uh, things that we consume out there, you know, and um, you are most of the time what you don't consume because if you keep this temple open, if you keep your energy channels open and if you keep this body as empty as, 
uh, as void as it can be, then it becomes a channel to transfer this universal energy in your body and you become a true human, human like true light body, the light, light as much as possible. So this is something that I worked on yesterday. I put this little graphic. Um, so it's like a food pyramid, but also it's a little more different. Um, so I'll start with the bottom line. So these um, food groups are animal flesh and their excretions. And when we look at the angstrom energy of the, this food group, um, the cooked fish, the cooked chicken, you know, um, beef, pork, uh, they have zero energy, zero. They're already uh, dead to start with. And when you cook them, um, their energy even like dies out even more, except one of them, which is fish. It, raw fish has more energy, but when you cook it, it dies. Um, secondly, I think it's the processed man-made foods. And these include the pastas, grains, desserts, uh, processed sugar, coffee, tea, and chocolate also go into this uh, section. Uh, they have uh, between zero and 3,000 angstrom energies. Um, and then the next level is, I think, the mucus forming vegan foods. Um, these include all types of oils, nuts and seeds, seeds, beans, fats, even coconut meat, and then starchy vegetables such as potatoes, rice. And all of these have around like 4,000 angstrom energy. Um, the reason why, like, even though you might think, oh, olive oil is Mediterranean food, it might be healthy, but oils, nuts, and seeds and fats are very blocking to, the, to our system. Because, like I said, our system is made up of water, and oils and fats don't want to stay together, right? Oils push the water, pu water pushes the oil. And when your cell is made up of, so your body is uh, made up of 75 to 85% water, but your cell actually is almost 100%, 99% water. So when you're ingesting uh, lots of fats, first of all, it thickens the blood, uh, the oxygen starts traveling less into the cells. And then inside the cells, the, the fats push away the water and water pushes away the fats. So the cells in itself become dehydrated because like I said, fats and oils, uh, fats and water don't stay together. So I think that's like the most simplest explanation. I'm sure there's like a better scientific explanation, but this is how I put it in my mind, you know? And then <laughs> the next one is the vegetable family. So, oh, this, this is wrong. Sorry. It's all the vegetables. Uh, I, I forgot to change the, the subtitle. Um, so, yeah, it's all the vegetables, the, um, you know, carrots, starchy vegetables, leafy greens, um, all of them have around 80,000 to 9,000 angstrom of energy. And then when we look at the fruits, they have 8,000 to 10,000. They're vibrating even high. And this is, um, when I look in the nature, you know, fruits are always growing in trees closer to the, to the sun. And I feel like that's why they have like more energy in themselves. And then vegetables are always closer to the ground. Um, they are more grounding um, when you consume them. And, um, and then the next one, is uh, the fruit juices, vegetable juices, distilled waters infused with energy. They are around 10,000 angstrom of energy. And I think above this is the sun and air where you know the breatharians live off of and including energy work like such as qigong, yoga, sun gazing, grounding, uh, good conversation, ecstatic dancing and breath work. So, um, the way I see this chart is when you are consuming more of these foods in the lower parts where they have less angstrom of energy, you, you feel like you have to consume a lot because they have low energy. So you eat, you eat, you eat, and then you're not even full. Uh, you want to eat more and more. And you, at the end of the din dinner, you're still looking for a dessert, right? So, um, but when you go up this ladder, of higher angstrom energies, then when you especially come to this 
section, I feel like, the fruit section, even if you eat just a, um, I don't know, a small portion of watermelon, you're full. You're feeling content, full, happy, joyful. You have all you need. <laughs> and that's why I think when you come around this part of the ladder, you know, um, you're consuming less and less where you're creating more space and more void in your body, where you're allowing more of this sun, breath energy, universal cosmic energy come to your body. So then you're truly becoming your true self, your original self, your um, loving self. You know, um, I think we come to earth to uh, en enjoy um, love and joy not i don't think we are here for suffering and i think this scheme just brings you closer to your original self where you are experiencing more love and joy in your life and i think um you know ascension uh, to upper dimensions can happen in a lot of different ways but i found that on my journey um this did not only physically heal me but also elevated me spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. And it helped, my, uh, it helped me along, along my ascension journey. So, so uh, regarding this angstrom energy, I also want to touch upon this raw versus cooked um, perspective, because when you look at the raw vegetables, right under the Kirlian photography, they're emanating this beautiful purple, blue light. And however, when the tomato is cooked, its angstrom energy drops down from eight to 9,000 to 4,000 to 6,500. And it's the same thing with broccoli. And this is only when the broccoli is steam flashed for a um, couple of seconds. <laughs> it's not even like cooked or, you know, um, steamed for more than five minutes, just a couple of seconds this broccoli gets steamed and then its light dims down. So a um, couple, uh, when I first started rowing that and, and when I met Jason, um, he, he told me about this and um, he said like, do you wanna be the blue light or the no light? <laughs> you know, and I'm sure everyone here in the workshop, you know, and everyone in the world would wanna choose to be this light, right? would wanna glow from inside out and be the love and the light that you are and um, just you know be the light that you are. <laughs> so what we consume is does matter so much. You know, it's not only about eating more um, vegetables or fruits, but also it's about eating them raw when they are not dead, when they're when they're picked right off the um, tree, and when they still have that living energy within them. So, how does my fridge look like today? It looks like this. <laughs> um, I posted this on my Instagram the other day, and I just love the way it looks because it has all the rainbow colors and um, all the fruits that I love. And along my seven-year journey, um, you know, I told you, like, as as I started as a raw vegan, um, so I was consuming nuts, seeds, vegetables, fruits. But along my path, especially after incorporating the oral therapy, drinking my own waters, um, my craving for vegetable family, vegetable <laughs> just, um, oh, hi, Jason. I think you need to mute, sorry. Um, kind of like, uh, uh, my cravings for the vegetable kingdom just kind of like um, went away. And now um, I'm consuming more of the fruits, fruit family. And I noticed the difference in my health and my energy so much. I'm like just vibrating so much higher. I'm much happier. I have more energy. I sleep less. I exercise more, um, all these benefits. But, you know, it's not only the food, of course, it's also our thoughts, uh, our patterns, our uh, way of thinking. So you can see the same uh, frequency difference here with the different feelings, different emotions. So when you're in a, a shame, guilt, 
grief, fear um, mode, you know, when you are in that vibration, you are really um, not doing any favor to yourself when you are shaming, shaming or guilting somebody else or yourself. Uh, you're not doing any like, you know, um, anything to the other person, but you are actually changing the structure of your own water in your body. So it's always making that conscious decision in every minute of, you know, being aware of your emotions and feelings and your thoughts and changing that in that very moment, because you have that power. You have the power to always choose happiness, to be grateful, grateful. Gratitude is the best um, tool for me. Whenever I'm feeling down, I always look at the full side of the cup. You know, I, I have this roof over my head. I have my health. I have this fresh air, the sun, um, my family, um, you know, my friends, all the good energy I'm taking from my, from my surrounding, you know, you can always find things that you are grateful for and shift that energy immediately. You know, you are your own master and you can do this and you can shift this frequency from this lower energy to up high here. You know, love, joy, peace, enlightenment, reason, acceptance, willingness, these all bring you these high frequencies and your, the structure of your water in, in, in your body automatically changes in a matter of minutes. So coming to these uh, distilled waters, what are these distilled waters? So firstly, um, the machine made distilled water, right? I have a distiller machine at home and it makes um, distilled water even out of tap water. And then we have the nature's distilled water, which are rain, mist, snow, dew, fog. In the monasteries, um, they still collect these waters uh, for the monks to, you know, um, clean themselves with the best kind of water. And then uh, we have the herbal teas, veggie juices, fruit juices, coconut water, and then orange, urine. <clears throat> and the reason that I call urine orange is because, um, you know, ha language has a lot of power and orin has a better uh, sound to it and in the urine therapy world we just call it orin because it's actually coming from the word orin um, in latin i believe or or sound has a much more positive sound like aura um organism orchestra orgasm <laughs> um this or sound has a much more much more power within it so i call it i like to call it oren urine is like ur is like dirt the ur sound has like more of a, like a dirty connotation to it whereas the oren is the um the healthiest water <laughs> so when I came across this idea four years ago, what did I do? Okay, so I mean, I'm sure people, I don't know how many of you already practice it here. If you do, please type in yes. Um, um, I don't see the chat here, but um, so, I mean, we, we've been brought up as thinking like urine is a waste. It's, uh, it's not clean. It's um, many yeses here, many yeses here. <laughs> yes? many yeses. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so I don't have to talk about it too long. But yeah, I've read all these books. And this, like changed my life for the better. You know, um, especially if there's anyone who do it, I would highly suggest um, I would highly suggest, oops, oh, I'm going, okay. okay, for you to read uh, The Water of Life from John Armstrong, um, your own, own perfect medicine. Oh, I think, uh, Jason, could you please mute, because it's doing echo. Sure. Thank you. Um, so yeah, Your Own Perfect Medicine, these were the first, the very first books that I read and reading about all the testimonials in it, the science behind it, you know, changed my life. So if you're new to it and if you want to read these books, um, um, I also have some PDFs, a PDF collection in my G drive. You can always text me, DM me your um, email address and I, I'll be more than happy to share with you my collection of PDFs. Um, so what I found out in these books is that um, urine is actually sterile. It's the cleanest water out there. 
Um, it carries the energy of the soul. It's alive. It's a living substance. And it create, keeps creating on and on and on it, because it's living. And um, it's, it's not a waste. It's not dirty. Um, what happens in the body is that your blood gets uh, filtered through your liver. And then that gets filtered through your kidney, through millions of nephrons in the kidneys. And that becomes your golden elixir of life, your uh, fountain of youth. And if your urine is dirty, or if it smells, or if it's uh, blurry, then it means your blood is actually dirty. Um, so as you clean up your diet, you will notice that your urine will also get clean and clean, cleaner and cleaner and lighter and lighter in color. Here's my glass of my urine. Mine today looks like this. It doesn't even look yellow, but it's like it has this slight tint. Um, it almost looks like coconut water and it tastes super sweet. <laughs> I mean, like not like a fruit juice sweet, but <laughs> like good sweet. <laughs> not bitter, it's not salty, it's plain sweet. <laughs> and this is not like uh, oral therapy, even though it's not as, mm -hmm. it's not very well known, you know, it's not a new hip thing. It's an ancient therapy. And it's even written in the Bible where it says, drink waters out of your, out of thine own sister and running waters out of thine own well. So, um, and yes, as you all know, as above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. We are all connected, we are all one, and we are all a reflection of each other. And I see this also as we are the microcosm of the microcosm, right? We have trillions of cells inside us, and when we look at the sky, we have trillions of stars. We are always a reflection of each other. And, um, and the, what, the, what happens with the earth is, earth is also drinking its own water. It's raining and it goes through the waterfalls, mountains, springs into the oceans, and then it evaporates again. It condenses up in the clouds and then it rains again. So we have this constant circulation of energy on earth. And we, we as the microcosm of the microcosm, we are actually should be doing the same thing, circulating our energy, circulating our water, cleansing ourselves over and over. And yeah, just replicating the nature. So um, what can you do with your own water? You can drink it, loop it all day long. You can do fasts on it, but you can also do whole body rubs. You can rub it on yourself, do enemas with it. I do um, five gallons of enemas and I feel like they are an internal shower for me. Every time I like fall back to a cooked food, let's say I went back to Turkey and I tried something that my mom does or, you know, I, I do an enema and it resets my system. I go back to raw foods. I start, uh, I stop craving the, um, the cooked foods um, or heavier, denser foods. And it just elevates uh, my energy, my system, cleanses me, oxygenates my cells and my whole body. So you can ingest this golden elixir of life in any way you can think of. You know, you can do whole, uh, whole body rubs, enemas, you can drink, drink through the nose, you can use a neti pod, which is what I usually do. I fill it and then I close one nostril, take it in, I do the, it with the other side. I use a tongue scraper. <clears throat> I dip this copper tongue scraper in my urine and then scrape my tongue. Uh, you can do douches. You can use a nebulizer and breathe it in to clean up your lungs. You can use gloves and do hand soaks. It makes your skin so soft. You can do foot soaks for any dry foot feet. Um, uh, dry skin that you might have. You can get um, a dropper and put eardrops on your ears, eyes. You can wash your hair with it. It just has endless, endless, endless benefits. Um, and as I've been doing this for four years now, uh, drinking my own urine and 
cleaning up my body with it, ingesting, taking it from every portal that I can, I'm getting more and more and more benefits. It just never ends. Just that when I thought, oh, I healed everything. And then I'm like, oh, my skin is even better and softer. And oh, like I'm getting this benefit. Oh, my hair is fuller. Or, you know, it just like keeps giving and giving. Um, okay, so the next thing is on that ladder I showed you is the pranic lifestyle. Because prana air is all around us, the energy is all around us, and we can tap into this uh, energy world through breath work. As John guided us in the beginning, we can do sun gazing, which is a practice of looking at the sun. Uh, you can start with sunrise, sunset, and then you can, as you clean up your body, you can start gazing even during the day. Um, you can do grounding, uh, getting energy from the portals of your feet, from the uh, earth. Uh, as you, you can start opening up your energy channels and start practicing Qigong, Tai Chi, which helps you to bring in more energy from the cosmos into your body. I, uh, I believe yoga does the same. But also there are other things like you can get this cosmic energy, life energy from a good conversation, from, you know, just dancing in your living room for an hour instead of having a heavy meal. You know, you can get it from a laughter, from laughing with your friends. There's so many ways, you know, so many unlimited ways of getting this cosmic energy into your body, which is lighter and lighter instead of, you know, consuming animal flesh or animal secretions or dancer fo foods that are blocking your body. Because this is all about our bodies are like, light bodies we need to be able to transfer this light energy this cosmic energy every every day every time every minute like it should be flowing the whole time whenever you have pain like over your shoulder over your knee that means there's a blockage of energy there that means the energy the, the cosmic energy is not flowing there so it's all about cleaning up these obstructions where this energy can flow and you can be the uh, light energy that you are you can feel the love flowing through you more and more and the joy and all the good vibes will be with you so um, I want to put this again so that we have another look and so yeah as you go up this ladder I feel like you gain more energy more clarity more time because you're cooking less and less <laughs> and you're just eating a fast food, which is a, you know, the fastest food, which is a fruit. Um, and you're spending less on money. So that allows you to gain more financial freedom. You have more flow, more manifestation, because as you clean up your body, you also clean up uh, your third eye, uh, your pineal gland, which allows you to manifest also more and more. And you raise your frequency and you, as you clean up your pineal, you also get more psychic abilities as well. So I love this picture because this is your pineal gland, uh, which is, uh, <laughs> um, got contaminated with fluoride in the body. And this is actually how it's supposed to look. It's a juicy, watery gland, little gland in the middle of your head area, right in the middle. Like if you put a line here and a line here, that's where it meets inside. Um, and it's so, so, so powerful. And, um, so pineal gland, pineal, the name itself, it comes from a pine cone because this uh, pineal gland looks like a pine cone and it's almost like a crystal. Um, you know how we always use um, crystals to manifest things uh, because they hold energy within them. But actually what I want to say here is you are the crystal. You can manifest anything and everything you want by changing your inner terrain by cleaning up your body, by cleaning up your pineal gland, because pineal gland is the stargate of the body. In the, um, okay, let me get this right. In the Western um, medicine, um, I think it, it's um, considered as, <clears throat> oh, sorry, in the, um, in the Eastern um, beliefs that it's believed that the soul, uh, reincarnates into the body on the, uh, I believe it's the 49th day. And in the Western uh, medicine, it's considered that, um, I think the gender or I'm not, 
I should have to get this right. Um, but what I want to say is like Stargate, uh, the pineal gland is the Stargate, and that's when the energy, the soul comes in. And that's how you can manifest and create your own world from there. So life is a projection of our energy. We are magic. Our energy does magic. It's the creative force of the whole universe. It's not only about cleaning the physicality. It's not only cleaning the physicality, but it's also cleaning, uh, creating the reality around us. Uh, toxins are matter casting a shadow on the light and you can change your own vibration and you can change your life. This is the message that I wanted to give to you. And lastly, about the science of iridology. So the eyes are not only a window to the soul, but it's also a window to the body, to the glands, to the organs. Um, this is a very close up picture of an eye, a pupil where you can see so many layers right here. There's a layer and then there's another layer underneath and it goes on and on. So, um, and you can see how here it's like, it almost looks like um, a little like pussy, right? Like lymph congestion. And the thing is, uh, when you go to a hospital and get a checkup, when you get a blood test, um, you see what's inside your blood, what's going on in your blood. However, when you're looking in the eyes, um, so our bodies are 75% water, right? But from the 75%, three quarters of the 75% is lymphatic liquid, lymphatic fluid. And the 25% of that is the blood. So when you're getting a blood test, you're actually looking at maybe like 15% of your body, which is still a reflection of your body, but not the whole uh, holistic uh, perspective. But when you're looking in the eyes, you're seeing where the lymphatic fluid, your, where your lymphatic system is at. <clears throat> So when you're looking at this eye, I can already tell you that it's a, a chronic, um, a patient that might have chronic diseases. You know, there's so many holes in it. Uh, we call them lucumas. There's so many patterns, changes, and it's so filled up with all this um, like lymphatic fluid that I can't even see the gene lines, the straight lines. So I will get more into it. So there are actually two colors of eyes originally. One is blue, one is brown. So you're going to ask, oh, my eyes are green. So what's up with that? <laughs> or my eyes are grayish blue or my eyes are hazel. Um, my eyes are brown, but I have this green line in it or, you know, anything. You, you will see that there's so many different colors of eyes. But actually, there are only two colors. One is brown, true brown, and one is blue. If you have green eyes, that means you have the blue eye and a yellow uh, lymphatic fluid on top of it. If you have like whitish blue eyes, then it means you have a blue eye again, but you have the lymphatic white uh, fluid on top of it. If you have hazel eyes, then it means your eye might look like brown, but it means you have, if you have any colors of green in your eye, even though it looks brown, it means you have a true blue eye, but you have tons of layers on your blue eye so that it looks hazel or brown. Um, so this is, um, oh, it looks a little bl blurry, sorry about that. Um, so this is, when you look at the eye, this is like a good, um, I think, um di diagram to show you how like which part of the eye shows which part of the uh, body so when you look at the eye the bottom part is always the legs the kidneys all the organs that are in the bottom part of our body right um, and as you go up it's like mm, reflects itself um so here it's the heart, the lungs, and as you go in the upper areas, it's the head area, the nose, the eyes, and the lungs here again, and some organs uh, repeat on both sides. I mean, it's, it reflects the right side of the body, left side of the body. Um, and when you look at right around the pupil, the black uh, circle, this is um, the colon, the ingestive system. 
uh, digestive system, sorry. Um, and this is what also tells you is um, what you eat, what you consume is so important because everything spreads around the colon into the body. Even the eye shows you this. You know, what you consume is so important because every organ and gland is um, placed around your colon and it reflects, and it, if you have toxins in your colon, it just goes directly in your organs. In some, um, in some eye uh, pictures, you will see this, we call it um, radius solaris. It looks like a sun radiating. And that's mainly because of the toxins in the digestive system spreading into the uh, other organs and glands. So I, I put this uh, to be able to tell you how, you know, um, the eye shows what's going on in, your, in the body, but actually this is the diagram that I work with. Every little parcel, every little um, pizza slice shows, tells you something about another gland or an organ in the body. And every color change, every texture change also tells you something. So it's really an amazing science and you can tell so much from the eyes that, you know, it's amazing. It's such a great guide for you. So when I analyze the eye pictures of my patients, I usually divide it into four um, stages, acute, subacute, chronic, degenerative. So here I wanted to put two different eyes of two different people, you know, um, but they're both blue eyes and one looking very healthy. Um, this one, where you can see the lines of the genes, they are uh, a little uh, wiggly, but mostly straight. That means the person has really good genes, a little uh, congestion around the colon here, um, but no um, thyroid ring, no nerve rings. Well, a little nerve ring here, over here, um, but no color changes, no big lacunas, holes, nothing. This person is like, um, I would say in an acute stage uh, where they're not probably um, fighting through, you know, any chronic diseases, they are pretty healthy. And then on the right side, um, this is a person is probably has, you know, some um, complaints um, and has some work to do to clean up the body. Cause you can see how uh, the extra layers on the eye uh, turn into some lacunas, you know, holes around here, some texture change, color change. I see a ring around it. Um, there's a lot of issues that needs to be addressed, you know, uh, in the heart area, in the kidneys, in the upper head. There's a lot of white color, which shows you the congestion. Um, I mean, there's so much. And also I see the uh, red veins, uh, veins in the sclera of the eye, which shows acidity in the body be all white like this one so what happens is after detoxification after going up in that ladder i showed you going into lighter sources of food that are higher in water that clean up you and uh, clean you up that you know clean up this 70 percent of water that you have in your body what happens is that reflects on your eyes too and in um, years or months, you can see these kind of changes where an eye that might look like a honey color, brown color can ch change into a greenish, bluish color. And here you can see the blue color in these areas, but then more brownish and uh, yellowish color in the digestive system around here, which tells you that the colon needs to be cleansed, the diet needs to be cleansed, you know. Um, there's maybe like mucoid plaque, um, mucus in the colon still. And then I also see some uh, nerve rings around here, but the thing is it's, it's come a long way. You can even see that these lacunas, these holes became smaller and smaller. And you can see that um, the gene lines, the wiggly lines around here became straighter and straighter, straighter, which is what happens because when you are consuming these high angstrom energies, it also reflects itself on the DNA and your RNA. So your genes become stronger. I mean, you, you probably already know that you can turn on and off your genes. The environment um, 
of your cells define a lot whether your genes are going to be, you know, surrendering to some diseases or not. When you change the inner terrain, your genes reactivate themselves and become stronger and stronger. And we can see these in this situation in the eye where, you know, like I'm especially looking here, they're so straight. Okay, so uh, what I wanna finish up this presentation with is it's all within you. You know, you can heal so much with, um, I don't know how much did I take? Oh, one hour, perfect. Um, so yeah, it's all within you. You can heal so much uh, within your uh, emotional body, mental body, physical body, astral body uh, with these angstrom energies, high angstrom energies. And you have this also within you. Your water is so powerful. You know, all you need to do is pee in a cup and drink it, circulate it, loop it. And um, yeah, you are already complete. You are whole. You, your body has the consciousness within it and it already knows what to do. You are complete, but you are not finished. Like my friend Jerome says, and I believe in you, you got this. <laughs> and you can always um, follow me on my journey. You know, I always make um, interviews on Instagram with people who are practicing urine therapy. Um, I had so many guests um, over the last six months. I even had a guest who um, fasted on it for 17 days. So no food, no juices, nothing, but just urine for 17 days. And he had um, so many benefits. I mean, if it were anything uh, like a waste or bad, something bad for you, you know, he would have lost his life. <laughs> um, but he just elevated himself, you know. Um, and yeah, I also post a lot of um, food uh, recipes and inspirational photos of for clean eating and moving. So that's pretty much it. And so I'll stop sharing my screen now so I can see you all <laughs> again. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. I hope it went by fast for you. So if you have any questions, I'm here to answer you. <laughs> That was wonderful too, Jay. Thank you so much for your information sharing today. That was really, really, really wonderful. I'm glad to hear more about your story. There were a couple of questions that were that were typed into the chat. So maybe I'll maybe I'll read those first and and then hopefully um, other people will share and comment and ask questions and, and we can make this into a little bit of a little bit of community sharing. Right. We've, we've, yes, we've had absolutely. a wonderful share today. We've had some wonderful information. We've we've brought up some wonderful information. We have a little community here and we have time. So so please, you know, if, if people would like like to share or comment, please do. But before we do that, let me just ask a couple of the questions that were typed into the chat. And and um, Miranda asked, uh, what should someone do if they're feeling worse, more tired? after three years of living on, you know, structured waters, living waters, or in, or in therapy. But what, what if things aren't, aren't well after three years? Mm -hmm. So there might be a couple of reasons to this. Um, uh, besides your own living water, what else are you consuming? What uh, energies are you consuming on? You know, what, what are your um, emotions, the things that you're going through, your stress levels, um, and how much are you drinking? You know, um, I had a lot of different um, results when I was consuming just one cup a day to gallons a day or liters a day. So, you know, we are... Um, like let's say 70 pounds to I don't know 200 pounds or 300 pounds um, heavy people and we we need a certain amount of water to wash this body I always give this example like let's say you have this car and you're you want to give your car a wash right a car wash you can't wash your car with a cup of water it's not going to be enough you have to drink at least like four liters a day. That's my um, good amount for a day, like four liters a day so that you can wash this mess, like this mass, sorry, not mess, mass. Um, 
good enough. Like um, that's why the amount matters a lot. And also what other things you are consuming, you know, um, like on a vegan diet, you might go ahead and like, even it's, if it seems like the cleanest form of uh, source of food, you know, you might be consuming soy, which is GMO. You might be consuming corn, which is GMO. You might be consuming a lot of oils, which clog up your blood and your cells. You might be consuming a lot of nuts and seeds and where they're clogging up your body again, you know, thickening your blood and not allowing the oxygen to go into the cells. Um, there's a lot of um, paths and ways to work on it, but as you progress into, you know, lighter sources like fruit juices, veggie juices, your own water, um, positive thinking, uh, energy work, tai chi, yoga, qigong, as the more you open up these energy channels in your body, the more you're going to receive the cosmic energy, and wherever you have blockages, issues, ailments, the energy is going to go in there open up the channels and you're going to gain your health back. So I hope this answered your question. Um, Miranda, if you have anything else, please let me know. Well, actually I was drinking four liters a day for about, I think I did eight months. It was like last July to February. And I, for some reason in February, I, started getting this like sick feeling and I was getting really tired like the more I drank the more tired I got hmm. and then since then I've dropped it down to like one or two liters and I drink a lot of pasteurized um, juice and sometimes I, I just started juicing again because it's finally warm out but I don't know I felt like I like I know what you're talking about like the more water the better that's why I was always really pushing the four liters and I'm like I'm just going to keep this in my life but at some point my body I don't know why I mean I wasn't eating hardly the only fat I was eating was maybe tahini and sometimes avocado but small amounts mm -hmm. and was always trying to stay um, mucus lean mm -hmm. so like salads and sweet potato and squash but I mean I can't I, I agree with everything you're saying. I was just trying to really push the hydration and I don't know, have you ever heard of that happening? Um, so I think I have the answer to your question because sometimes what happens is when you're drinking a lot of water, uh, a lot of your own liquid, also what happens is like you're, you feel full in your stomach and then you don't eat or drink as much of the fruit juices or the fruits and vegetables. That's, ha that's something that happened to me too. And um, so you need to somehow like balance it out, like have your fruit juice. Uh, I highly recommend fruit juices. I know there's a lot of uh, people out there who are against it, but once you lower your fat, the insulin resistance goes away and you can drink fruit juice and it's so good for you. Like I drink, all I drink every day is like pineapple juice, watermelon juice. And if I were drinking veg vegetable juices, I wouldn't be getting the energy that I needed. I would be feeling tired, fatigue, you know, not have the love and joy for life, but the fruit juices give you what you need. So once you lower your fats and open up the doors to your cells, because if these doors are clogged with fats, then the sugar in the blood cannot go into the cell with the help of insulin. They, the sugar in the blood goes high, you secrete more insulin, it causes insulin sensitivity, diabetes, all sorts of things. So keeping the um, fats to low is the, the most important thing, in my opinion, when you're on a raw vegan, vegan journey, uh, looping your water. Once you do that, and then you start incorporating more fruit juices, then it really balances it out because the fruit juices give you all the energy that you need Ready? and you don't feel as tired uh, as you may feel. And also the other thing uh, that I caught while you're saying is that, you know, potatoes, like starchy vegetables, uh, when you look at starch, 
it's it's a vegan food it's whole food yes and there's again a lot of people out there who promote it but i am totally against it because what happens with starch is it cuts the electricity in the body we are electrical beings and what happens with starch is that i, the I would be no they still go out to eat they get like raw vegan stuff <laughs> hey Kaylee. <laughs> hi love I totally agree with what you're saying, by the way. Sorry, I didn't mean to unmute <laughs> Thank myself. You. No worries. Um, so yeah, when you're consuming starch, what happens is the electricity stops running through your body. And these electric and energy channels that I've been talking about stop uh, flowing. Like the energy stops flowing throughout the body. You feel more clogged. The energy can't go through. The electricity can't go through. The cells cannot communicate with each other. Because starch is such a thing where like, it's almost like glue, like, you know, rice, potatoes, even uh, steamed like sweet potatoes cause that unfortunately. And they cause mucus. Um, you know, mucus is formed in the body when the, bo the body doesn't want it. Just like when we step outside and there's cold air and our nose gets mucusy and it starts running because the mucus is trying to stop the cold air going into your lungs. It's like it's there to, I mean, this is what my thinking is. And it's the same thing in the, in the colon. When you eat acid forming fruits, such as animal flesh or animal excretions, which are all acidic and not alkalizing, uh, the colon produces mucus and it, it does the same thing when it comes to potatoes. Um, I mean, I've tested this so many times, you know, uh, with the enemas, you can see how much mucus comes out of your body and you can test it with yourself too. You can, you know, have uh, a clean diet and no starchy foods and then try potatoes. You will see that your nose will start running. You will see more mucus in the enemas. Uh, I mean, I've, I've proved it to myself over and over. So if you want to take um, your level, le um, level of health into the next step, I would say just, you know, wean off the potatoes a little and uh, incorporate more fruit juices, more fruits, lower the fats and just, you know, go up in that ladder. Yeah. I, can I ask a follow up question? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm, I don't know if I can talk about like Chinese medicine or um, Ayurveda you in relation to anything, raw foods. You can talk about anything, love, please. Yeah, well, basically raw foods, according to those systems and according to my bodies, actually increase my, um, like the air element in my body and make it really hard to sleep. So I, so n another thing, like I, the reason why I brought in the sweet potatoes was because I needed to ground because I all the just being raw and all that living water was making it impossible for me to sleep at night. And well, I found when I would do like, a, I was like, oh, I don't think I'm there yet. Like I'm not at that level. If I can't sleep. So well, mm -hmm. um, did, were you feeling tired and wanting to go to sleep and not be able to sleep or you, you were just sleeping less hours? I was, I would feel really tired and then I would lay down to go to sleep and it's all, I'm all in my head. Like mm -hmm. it's this untethered energy that's just making mm -hmm. the mind like super overactive. And then mm -hmm. I found when I incorporated more cooked vegetables, I was able mm -hmm. to sleep. So I just usually have like half raw, half cooked. And now my acupuncturist who I'm starting to go that route because it's a 5,000 year old medicine that does have a lot of good points like mm -hmm. raw is good when you're in the appropriate climate but when you're in a really cold place it actually takes more energy for the body to break down mm -hmm. and that's what I experienced because I did a long juice fast over the winter and I think I actually damaged my body because on the other side of it like it didn't have energy and the more raw I ate the worse I felt and then when I'm bringing in cooked I feel better Mm -hmm. But I understand that we need to have hydration and this is a path to open your pineal gland. And I mean, I don't want to be eating more cooked, but yeah, it seems like my body is out of balance from too much water. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so there's a couple of things that I want to uh, talk about. One is, you know, we're actually tropical beings. We're not even supposed to live in cold climates. It's against our nature, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, along the, like the history, that's what happened. And most of us live in cold climates where we feel that like energy of warmth, uh, the need for that. And um, when we feel... Also, the other thing is like when you go to bed, if you're feeling anxious or if you have like insomnia symptoms, um, what happens is when you're on the raw diet, raw um, living waters, some of these symptoms come up to the surface even more because like before you totally heal, uh, you almost go over that hump to heal yourself. And some of those symptoms just come to the surface even more. Um, if you're on the raw diet and you're feeling those symptoms, I would look in ways to um, holistically heal anxiety, which usually happens due to, you know, heavy metals in the head area. You can do like a heavy metal detox smoothie um, or use some other minerals like zeolite or even incorporate aged urine. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. What's that? Can't get on the, I can't get on the question. Oh, okay. Um, so the other thing is when you feel, the reason that you feel better when you're eating the potatoes and the starchy vegetables is actually it, those vegetables are kind of like numbing the body because it's grounding uh, and, and kind of blocking the body, you're feeling less of your emotions. It's also slowing down the detox, though. Yes, exactly, because it's blocking the body. So you, you do, the channels are not open to detox and flush. So what if I were you, I mean, I know Chinese medicine is great, but I think it's old information. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I don't want to say old, but I don't see it as the most accurate um, wisdom or science or knowledge out there because it's missing points. I mean, I, I, I showed you the photos in the presentation, like the raw foods have the living energy and we should be looking at things in, instead of like minerals, vitamins, uh, nutrients, we should be looking at everything in terms of energy, like raw foods, raw um, uh, fruits and vegetables have such high energy. When you even like pasteurize the fruit juice, the angstrom energy goes down 2000. And, you know, it, it's, it's all about the energy. I know how you feel when you eat the potatoes and especially in the colder climates, I understand that because they are very grounding, warming, comforting foods. But I mean, I used to eat it too, but it was numbing me. Um, you know, it's a choice. Um, do you want to go the go to the difficult route and heal yourself, or you know, um, feel better in the moment? Um, we also have to consider also when we're talking about um, you know changing our foods is is that you know energy what we are about energy and we're talking about food and food and sustenance is energy and we have to recognize that, but we also have to recognize that emotions are energy. Mm -hmm. and, and thoughts and words are energy too. And, yeah. and the things that we believe uh, determine outcomes in our life. And, and, it, and if one person believes one thing, then that is their reality. And, and that, you know, changing from a, a, an old way of looking at reality, which is what we all have, we all have a broken outlook of reality. And as we come to a more realistic look and understanding of reality, we, we have to let go of some of the understanding that we used to have. And that, un, that, that takes time. And that takes conversations like this. It takes conversations like this. And it, and it takes listening to different opinions and hearing different opinions and trying on different opinions and deciding for ourselves. So it's not, it's, not, it's not something that really that someone else can answer for us. I think this is an important thing sometimes is that uh, 
So sometimes the answer isn't in somebody else's hand, but the answer is something that's inside of our own uh, personal self to, to, to de determine for ourselves. That we just have to take it into ourself and sit with it and, and practice it for a period of time and adjust with it and, 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 and learn how to accept and forgive because there's an emotional aspect to this that some emotional things have to be healed some mental things have to be healed this is not only nutrition it's not only whether it's starch or fat yes these are important aspects of healing and raw foods are an important aspect of healing but we can't leave out the emotional and the mental bits of this Yes, absolutely. I mean, the reason that I'm talking more about the food is that's because it's my expertise, you know, that's mm -hmm. my Excellent. portal, that's my portal of healing. That's how I healed myself. I did not do any emotional work, no shadow work, no psychotherapy, nothing, you know. I just healed myself with orange therapy and with raw foods. This is what I know. This is my truth. You can heal yourself with so many different ways. You know, you can heal yourself with a conversation, with a five minute breath work. Yes. There's so many ways of healing. So many. The reason why I'm talking about this is because this is what I did and this is what helped me on my journey. But um, I mean, you can try so many things. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of food, in terms of nutrition, this is what I would do. I would do like a heavy metal detox, you know, some herbs, uh, orange therapy, aged urine. I would age it. I would do aged um, enemas, you know, clean up that, clean up the system. Um, and also I would do neti pots. You know, if you have any um, heavy metals in the head area, in the pineal, um, I would just put my urine in a neti pot and just circulate it and clean this head area. Um, I would snort aged urine. <laughs> There's so many things you can do. Um, but yeah, I would just keep pushing and never give up. Never give up, you know. I, I got so many benefits this year that I didn't get the first year. Every year that you're practicing UT, you're in therapy, you're getting more and more and more benefits. You might seem like you reached a plateau or you might seem, you might feel like, oh, this is not getting any better. But trust me, as long as you're drinking your own water and you're staying on, you know, high vibrational foods, your body is still doing some cleanup behind the doors. And there's going to be a day where you're going to be like, oh, this symptom is gone. You know, it might take a year. It might take six months. Just be patient with it. Like, just keep loving yourself, keep, you know, pouring that love energy into yourself every day with every minute, you know, make that conscious choice. Every time you're going to make a choice, just ask yourself, what's better for my higher self? You know, what's better for me? And always take the higher route. Take the one that's high, uh, better for you, for your higher self, that's going to benefit you more. And... Trust me, those like accumulation of nows, those accumulation of um, choosing what's best for you is going to reward you um, like one way or another way, you know, like it's going to it's going to come back to you. It's the law of na nature. <laughs> so I hope this helped. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. It did. Mm -hmm. You're very welcome. Does any of you have any other questions? I'll, I'll say there was a couple other questions that were in the chat. So, someone asked on the chat about the enema. Someone asked about how long to keep in an enema. Is there a right or wrong way to do be doing an enema or for how long? Tuche, mm -hmm. do, you, do you believe there's some answers for these questions? Well, the good thing about urine is you can never go wrong with it. You know, it's there's no dogma. There's You can never, ever go wrong with it. You know, you can just sit in any way in any amount and it's always gonna do you good you know what i do with enemas is that i have a colima board and a colima bucket which takes in five gallons of sorry yeah five gallons of urine and um so i collect my urine um in jars in big gallons of jars 
And then once it reaches to five gallons, I do an enema. And um, quantity, yes. Like you can do it in smaller quantities with those little buckets um, multiple times a day, or you can get a Colima board and a Colima bucket and do once a week or once every two weeks um, and you'll be good. What I find is like doing it in bigger quantities helps me really to get rid of any addiction that I might have. Let's say I had a piece of cooked food and I'm like feeling more towards cooked food. I do an enema and it cleans up my system, resets my system and I never have that craving anymore. Let's say I had some fatty food, guacamole, something that had salt in it, fat in it that I'm usually not thriving on. Um, but let's say I had it, then I do an enema and that cleans up my system. And then I don't crave neither salty foods that create addiction nor fatty foods. So it, it really resets your system, kills the parasites, um, oxygenates your cell, cleans up your colon, um, cleans the colon from all types of mucus, uh, hardening mucus. So it's the best thing. I mean, we, today we have like such amazing, great tools. It's, it's, I mean, we're so lucky, so lucky. And we are talking about these things now. It's just, you can um, take your health to, you know, next level so much easily now with all these tools that we have and that we are aware of it is amazing. You know, I, I didn't know about animals like five, 10 years ago. I had no idea. These are now, secrets. Now these it's so popular. Secrets. These things are secrets. This information is not, yeah. not being shared, right? This is knowledge that's not being shared. And, and we need to have spaces where we can come together and share about these things and, and not feel strange to, to tell people that you know, mm -hmm. that you're involved in urine therapy. This, yeah. this, is, this is natural therapy. It's to understand really that urine is structured water. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a high energy water. That is natural water. The earth is a water rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a rock that's made of green and blue. It's made of water and green. The green is the trees that hold water. So it's a water rock and it's sitting in the light of the sun. Mm -hmm. And as the water sits in the sun, it goes from H2O to H3. This is natural. This is nature. H3 is structured water. That is natural energy. That's what the, the water does naturally when it gets in the light of the sun. So the earth has got all of this hydrogen energy in it. H3. It's always in the presence of the sun. So when we put our feet on the earth, we get that H3 from the earth. We get it from the water that's in a natural cycle because the sun is exciting that H2 and turning it into H3. As long as we're drinking water in a natural cycle, a cycle of nature, and we are natural beings. So our cycle is also a natural high energy H3 forming cycle, just like every other natural cycle on the planet. That's just nature. Nature takes H2 and turns it into H3. That's structure, that's health, that's the gift of life. That is the gift of life. That's us coming into alignment with what's been hidden from us. Mm -hmm. That's just knowledge that's been hidden from you. It's been, you've been told that that's dirt and that's waste and that's bad. But in truth, this is just completely coming into alignment with the nature. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it, I think like calling urine a waste dirty, something like would be like calling a mother's breast milk dirty, you know, anything that comes from the frontal side of your body is clean, whether it's your saliva, whether it's breast milk, whether it's urine, whether it's the semen, there's no way. I mean, we would be such a poor design if 
urine was coming out of the same channel where the semen, the life is coming from. You know, like if a waste is coming out of the same channel that the life is coming from, we would be such like poor designs, but we are not. We are such smart designs. <laughs> We're divine designs. We are divine designs, true. And don't have any doubt in your yeah. head. No. Yeah. 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 I'm giving you a <laughs> okay now it's gone um so yeah don't have any doubts that it might have something that's bad for you or um making you tired in any way you know um it's just gonna open up your en energy channels and allow you to bring in more energy clean you up clean your cells and I mean, it's so highly structured. And because the fact that it's a living water, when you age it, when you let it sit in a jar and it ages more and more, it just, the stem cells in it gets produced in number. And then when you re-ingest it, that stem cell, which is ready to become any cell in your body, it can become a skin cell, it can become a liver cell, then goes into the areas that are needed and becomes that cell. And it helps you to regenerate your organs and glands yourself. So it's, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> so I want to read some of the comments here. There's Sorry. another question here. There's another question asking about, mm -hmm. um, about the urine therapy uh, in, the, in the shower, in the bath. Uh, what's, what's the process for maybe putting it on your skin? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, do you shower in urine? Like have it filter through your shower or use a normal shower filter? Okay, so um, we use a shower filter, um, but it's not the ideal, of course. If you have a, if you have a house where you can install a um, cleaning system for the whole house, then that would be the best thing um, because then you could um, have really clean water. The shower filter is only cleaning it up at a certain point. You know, it's cleaning up the chlorine and some sediments in it, but not really cleaning up the fluoride or um, the other contaminants. So it's not the ideal, but of course, using a shower filter is better than not using anything else. Um, and about the shower, showering in urine. So what I do is like, I have this jar next to my bathtub that I collect the aged urine. And after I take a shower, I take the aged and rub it on my skin and just leave it on my skin. And sometimes I also rub it in my hair. Um, whenever I go to the beach, I bring a bottle with me and I spray it on my skin and I dry it under the sun. Um, but, you know, I have uh, friends and actually Marco here um, who practices like whole body rubs three times a day, which is, I think, great if you can do that. I mean, if you can make it a habit, it's wonderful. Um, just, you know, you can use a dropper and put it on your body and just rub it. Uh, the more you do, the better it is. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see. And also, do you have to keep the aged in the sun? Um, no, you don't. It, even if you keep it in a cabinet close to top, it still matures and the stem cells in it still multiply in number. But if you age it in the sun, I think it's an extra benefit because you solarize it. Um, you give more energy to your water. What would you say, John? Yeah, I agree. I think always to put the water in the sun. I think always it's, it's beneficial. Mm -hmm. Even if we're talking about distilled waters, you talked about it, you know, t catching the water and put it in a distiller. We're still catching water in an unnatural cycle. So, I mean, I have a distiller as well too. We have to understand that the distiller is clean water and it's important to use clean water. We must use clean water to drink and to cook with. But, but beyond that, we also need to have the structured water. So, so the distiller is, is a great start, but we want to energize that water even more. If we take it and we put it in the light of the sun, if we put intentions on it, if we put it in the light of the sun, or if you put it into a hydrogen bottle, I put mine into a hydrogen bottle and, and invigorate it that way with the, with the hydro, with hydrogen water. So, so it's, it's to put, it's to take your water from H2 to H3, which is the natural process. 
-hmm. That's nature. The sun is going to do that for our water if we drank it out of the lake, right? But we don't drink it out of the lake. We drink it out of the tap, which is coming from an unnatural cycle which is coming from a chemical and drug cycle. It's coming from a closed cycle. It's coming from a forced cycle. It's coming from a cycle that has drugs and chemicals in it. And it doesn't have a positive intention in there either. So what we wanna do is we catch that water and we clean it with the distiller. And then we wanna excite it with intention or putting it in the light or getting it into a hydrogen machine, a hydrogen water machine, which is going to invigorate that water again, bring it back to life. Or drinking your own waters that are coming from yourself or waters that are coming from another living thing, a fruit or a vegetable. Something alive can take the light of the sun and convert the water and turn it into H3. That's what a fruit does. That's what a vegetable does. It takes the light of the sun and captures it in a fruit or a vegetable with glucose and, and water hydration there, right? So we wanna eat fruits and vegetables that are H3 rich. We wanna drink waters that are H3 rich. We wanna drink natural waters. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, what's beautiful about drinking your urine is it's already structured, it already has that uh, vortex within it. Um, even when you're peeing, if you pee in the sea or ocean, you'll see that it's coming out in like spirals. Um, so, and it's the same thing when you're consuming fruit juices and vegetable juices, they're already structured. But what happens with the machine made distilled water, it's, it's, it doesn't have that vortexual energy. So um, yeah, you might um, always like to, to solarize it and same thing with your own water. Um, oh, Yana, just, oh, thank you, Yana, for staying, listening, <laughs> joining. <laughs> um, I think Jerome left too. So let's see. And also do you, okay, can you repeat the ways to detox heavy metals? Sure. Um, so aged durin is the first one I would say. And then I would recommend a mineral called zeolite um but there are certain instructions that comes with it you have to really hydrate yourself while using it um and drink lots of water and lots of vegetable juices to remineralize yourself so i would say zeolite is the second the first one is aged durin and then if you follow like medical medium uh he has a good detox heavy metal smoothie where um he suggests you to put like barley grass juice powder uh spirulina cilantro which is really good in removing heavy metals um wild blueberries and um, what else? There was one more, five things. Orange Bar juice. Orange juice, yeah. But that's not the effective one. Uh, barley grass juice powder, uh, spirulina, cilantro, wild blueberries, and oh, dulse, Atlantic dulse. Mm. These five uh, ingredients help move, uh, remove the heavy metals from the cells and not damage or release it in any part of the other, in other, in any other part of the body and just remove it safely from the body. So I would recommend that. Um, yeah, three things. Orin, aged urine, um, heavy metal detox smoothie and zeolite. And um, zeolites also like differ from each other. Uh, you need to be using like a good quality one. Uh, that's not artificially made, but it's naturally made. So. Um, if you need help with that, I can send you some links. Um, what else? I'm, let's see. Kaylee said, is Kaylee here? Oh, she left. Uh, it's worth but, but a hero's journey and really does require consistency. I practiced Ayurveda before raw fruit based fruits. And I felt so much worse with the cooked vegan foods. It made it so much more difficult for me to process the emotions. Yeah, I think that's what happens. Like it just, you know, it, it has that numbing effect, unfortunately, and becomes difficult to process the emotions. That's what happens. And when you're on a raw vegan journey, all the emotions come to the surface and you have right. to 
Wow. Em embrace them, uh, see them, accept them, hug them, love them, give love to yourself, hug yourself, <laughs> say it's okay. I see you. I know you're there. I'm accepting you. I'm loving you. I'm embracing you. Mm -hmm. But now I'm going to let you go. So once you do that, I know it's not the easiest path. But I mean, the cooked foods are so comforting. So it makes you feel like you're feeling better. But it's only momentarily, I think. It's a program. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, no, no animal in nature cooks their food. It's only us because we are so smart. <laughs> <laughs> so Katie also said fruits and fruit juices can stir up the toxins in the, all the body. So that's why you can feel worse. Exactly. I mean, the angstrom energy goes into that clogged area and then stirs it up. And, you know, and those toxins that are released has to go through your body to be flushed. And during that period of time, you feel bad. So detox is not something so fun, but it can be fun too, if you make it so, you know, just, just take it easy, take it slow, slow and steady always wins the race. Don't like, if you're just starting UT, urine therapy, don't go into like aged urine all day long. You know, I have a patient who did that I told her, like, take it easy. Just you don't have to rush. I mean, like, it took you years and years to come to this point. She was 50 years old. 50 years. You're, you're not going to, by using aged urine so much, you're not going to, like, just clean up all that junk in your body that, like, came in 50 years. It's going to take time. So you stepping stone it from uh, regular fresh urine into aged urine? Exactly. Yeah, I would start with fresh just take it easy, you know, one cup a day. Mm. That's how I started. And then increase it to one jar. And then how about with, with neti pod? You, you can go fresh or uh, if your uh, aim is to like decalcify your pineal gland, mm -hmm. can you go radical and go um, aged into the, uh, into the nose? Or, yeah, you, absolutely. or, or yeah, fresh so is better? To, how to I would start is like with fresh. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would put fresh. And then I would put, and then I would put, and drops of aged. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. And then I would go to only aged if you feel like you're ready. But after practicing it almost every day, mm -hmm. because even if I don't do this like couple of days, then I use the fresh urine to clean it up. Oh, my nose like burns so much, even with the fresh urine. But if I do it every day, then it becomes easier and easier and easier. And then one time I filled it with a six month aged urine and I did it and I had no issues. How, so, how long do you think the human body would take to, uh, if you had a calcified pineal gland and you started doing um, urine and aged urine through the, into the nose, into the brain, you know, and mm -hmm. with the neti pot, how long do you think it would take the pineal to really start to, like to, to break down, like to sizzle all the, um, the heavy metals in there and, and things of that nature? Um, so I think it depends on the person, like where they're at on their journey. But mm -hmm. what happened with me is, so I was practicing UT all, already for three years. And then I started doing the neti pod. And the day, like almost the week that I started doing the neti pod and cleaning my head area and my nasal area, immediately my dreams became so lucid I could remember them in the morning and um, they were, they felt so vivid and lucid and I just was able to remember everything. And like, I was almost living two lives, one in the morning and I had like all these crazy wild action movies at nighttime. I was going into different realms with crystals and seeing different beings, you know, I felt like my pineal, pineal or pineal, however you pronounce it, really opened up just open the third eye that yeah open the third eye because third eye is actually so close like you you directly clean it up when when you clean up your nasal pad i thought it was inside but it's not it's outside the uh, brain so and as part of this process was it intuitive so did you become more intuitive and more oh, feel, yeah. feeling based with, with this uh discovery 
Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, your psychic abilities go off the roof. <laughs> I mean, I'll, okay, I'll tell you a story. So last year, my um, dad had a very bad injury and um, not an injury, actually. Well, it's a pharmaceutical medication injury. And he was hospitalized. Um, when he used the medication, he couldn't breathe and he his brain died. Um, it's called hypoxia. So he was um, in hospital unconscious for a month. And during that time to be able to stay strong for my family, for my mom, and just for my own health being, uh, well-being, I was drinking so much urine. In the hospital, there was no healthy food. So I was just going to the bathroom, drinking my own urine, coming back, looping all day, all day. And during that time, I felt so strong, even though I was going through the hardest time of my life where, you know, my dad is unconscious. I can't even talk to him. We don't know if he's going to live or not. Um, it was a very tough time, but my own water kept me alive. It really kept me alive. And it took my psychic abilities to a whole new level where I never even saw it coming, never even thought it was possible. So a month later, um, my dad passed away. And the second day that my dad passed away, I started talking to him in my meditations. And before this, I think like, I mean, I always practiced energy work. Like even when I was in high school, I got a hand from a Reiki master and I was doing energy work and I was always open to it, but I never thought that I could talk to a person in, in another realm, in angelic world or anything. Um, and since that day, I'm still talking to him in my meditations. Um, whenever I channel and I concentrate and meditate, he's always there. I hear his voice. And I think this ability is everything that everyone has within them. It's just opening up your channels and your pineal gland. Uh, clearing up your pineal gland because that's such a juicy watery gland actually but it becomes so calcified with the fluoride in our tap water in our you know toothpaste that we used to use <laughs> um, you know they promoted that something that's like oh it's making your teeth stronger but it's actually um, taking away your power because you're so powerful you're a crystal yourself your pineal is your cr crystal you can manifest, create, do anything that you want. Your wish is your command. So it's really important, you know, to be aware of this and to protect your body, to protect your temple that um, you were given. We need to honor our bodies um, and protect it as, as much as we can. And urine is the best elixir to clean up this pineal gland, in my opinion. Um, it already starts cleaning it up, cleaning up itself when you are just drinking it, um, because pineal gland has two main arteries that goes around it like this, and pineal gland has, is the organ that gets the most blood flow in the body, the most blood flow. It's not even the heart; it's the pineal gland. So, well, however, however your blood is then your pineal gland is in the same situation. If you're looping your urine all day, cleaning up your blood, cleaning up your cells, then your pineal is also getting cleansed. And then in time, I mean, I, I wish Jerome was here. Um, he is walking the path of a breatharian, living on liquids only, uh, looping his urine. And um, he is uh, experiencing these, um, super like it seems like a supernatural human ability but it's actually something that we all have you know um you know he's working on like telekinesis and um seeing with eyes closed and my uh, blindfolded and um you know so many different energy work and it's out there there's so many people who who can do this you know telekinesis teleportation Belief plays a role here. People have to believe in themselves. Exactly. People have to recognize that they have these powers within themselves. So it's to, mm -hmm. it's to be empowered. It's to step into our power. It's to receive our power. 
Mm -hmm. have to believe that they can that they have this power Mm -hmm. that's the first rule you have to believe that it's possible and then you have to also believe that it's possible for you like my friend Gerald yeah it's true yeah because you think oh there are some people who can do it out there but I can't do it no you can do it too that's a deal killer yeah, you have to believe it's possible and then you have to also believe that it's possible for you. Impossible, and impossible. And then practice. <laughs> You'll have to practice. <laughs> yeah, you have to practice. And you have to clean up this baby. <laughs> I find, I, I, uh, John, what's what's your experience with sun gazing in the pineal gland and the connection to this, the, uh, the pineal? I love sun gazing. I think it's important, especially for us in the northern hemisphere. If we're in Canada, U.S., northern states, we have to spend some time in the wintertime looking into the sun. We have to make time to look into the sun. It doesn't take a lot of time. It takes a few minutes a day. But hmm. just doing that, you'll feel the healing in the, in the wintertime, just looking into the sun for a minute or two. Amazing. And just... You know, what am I holding in my mind as I look into the sun? What am I holding in my mind while my feet are on the ground? What am I holding in my mind while I'm drinking this clean, natural water? What am I holding in my mind while I breathe, while I'm in my natural cycle? What is the energy that I'm sharing with my world on a normal, natural basis? What's the energy that I'm putting out? Is it a loving energy? Am I holding love intent in mind? Is love in my mind right now? Or is fear and worry driving the ship? All right, we're creating what we're holding in the mind. Looking into the sun, putting your feet on the ground, drinking clean water, thinking things that are in alignment with truth. Truth is we're all love. Truth is, we are loving beings. Love is nature. Just come back to love. Come back to loving intent in your mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, questions about immortality up there. That's a big one, I think. Love it. I see it. Where is it? <laughs> um, what do you think about oh, immortality, yeah. Tuche? Okay, so I think immortality is there. <laughs> you know, um, if I read the book um, named Man's Higher Consciousness from Hilton Hotema and found out that, um, you know, breatharians used to live 80 to 100,000 years. And then when they incorporated water in their life, their lifespan came down to 1,000. And then when they ate the fruit, it came down to 200 to 300 years. And then when they incorporated vegetables and other foods, it came down to six to 70 years and animal flesh. So it's definitely out there. I think breatharians definitely have the capability to be immortal, living off of air, the lightest source of food. Um, and I think of this because also I read this um, uh, about this Nobel Prize winner where the scientist made an experiment where he took a chicken cell where chickens usually live up to eight to nine up to eight nine years however he took the cell and in the laboratory he um was growing it and he was what he was doing is was taking off the waste from the cell every single day taking off the waste and as the waste is taken off of the cell, he realized that the cell was living on and on and on. And he was able to make it live for 28 years, whereas it's impossible for a chicken to live 28 years. But it was taking, removing the waste every single day. And then one day, one of his assistants in the laboratory forgot to remove the waste and then the chicken cell died. So my point is, as long as the blockage, the waste is not there in the body, the body is actually immortal as much as the soul. Or maybe as immortal as 80 to 100,000 years where the breatharians used to live. But as long as the blockages is there, you know, um, 
we are almost like killing ourselves uh, with these cooked foods and um, you know animal flesh like these low angstrom energies that are creating blockages in the body where it's like a slow death almost we we are creating our own death um but you know we are so programmed that this is not about shaming or putting guilt on anyone it's just the way it is but we are here to change it so <laughs> but immortality is definitely out there and there are are some people who say they are immortal i don't know i've never met any i've never seen any uh, i know i have friends who know people who are around 300 years old um but personally i don't know anyone mm -hmm. um <laughs> so yeah I think you have another question here. Oh, do you use any oil at all to moisturize? Like if you're getting a massage or like if you shave and shower, do you use an organic soap or something? I was thinking of potentially using urine as laundry detergent with organic essential oils. Perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, um, there is, so, I know so many people doing that. They use urine as their laundry detergent and they add essential oils. That's the perfect way. I mean, I know so many uh, cultures also wash their dishes with urine. You know, urine is such a cleansing agent. It's so sterile, um, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, uh, antipathogenic, anti-cancer, <laughs> um, anything anti. It's sterile, the most sterile uh, water in the world, which is why when you get a cut or you get bit by a jellyfish, you know, you put your on your skin and it heals immediately. Um, it's the cleanest water out there. Um, I'm, am I missing any questions? Um, let's see. Um, I saw Natalie having a comment. Oh, okay. I'm super vata according to Ayurveda and should only be eating cooked. I used to follow it, but I don't, I don't anymore. Just raw now and I feel so much better. I just believed into Ayurveda too much, too much, but now I'm open to the intelligence of my body. Absolutely. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. You know, angstrom energies show us everything. Like you don't need to, I think the only food that energizes, gets energized when cooked is potatoes, um, but they are very mucus forming. Um, so I would not suggest them. But of course, like they're the best in terms of um, uh, vegetables, I think. Like they are high in glucose. They give you the clean carbohydrates for your body to work because all our body cells work on carbohydrates. Um, none of the cells go for a fat as the first source of energy. They always go for a carbohydrate. The brain works with carbohydrates or the cosmic energy. Um, so yeah, um, and, and people who eat brain, <laughs> I know like this is awkward, but in Turkey, there are people who eat brain of an, of an animal. They say that it's sweet, you know, it's, it's, it's because it feeds itself with carbohydrates. It's not fatty. The brain doesn't work with fats. Don't believe in the omega-3 lies. <laughs> also, omega-3s and 6s, they all eat, are in your um, fruits with the right amount. So you're already getting them when you're um, eating fruits and vegetables. Also don't ever believe in the protein um, <laughs> dilemma. Like don't think like when you're on a raw vegan diet, you're lacking any proteins, your body already makes the proteins that it needs. And anything that has a shape to it already has the amino acids, the building blocks that it it has like let's say it's an apple like the reason that it looks like an apple it has a shape is because it's formed of amino acids that those building blocks so when you eat an apple you're getting all the amino acids that you need you don't need protein protein is like the bigger chunk of amino acids you need the amino acids the little ones um okay so oh the lecano 
what do you suggest while we are urine fasting because the taste gets so strong yeah and it gets harder to continue that's true so what happens is so i experienced this on my four or five day urine fast um the the more i drink the more i loop um like on the fourth day it tasted like lemon juice uh it was very like strong and dense dark in color um if you're not happy with the taste of it, I mean, what's happening is actually the body is coming back to homeostasis because what happens with the breatharians is that they don't drink nor pee, right? The blood constantly gets looped inside the body. The urine gets reabsorbed from the uh, kidneys and the bladder back into the body. So when you're urine fasting, that's where you're getting to. Like it's gonna decrease and decrease and decrease and then you're gonna just be looping your own urine inside your body where your, your urine gets aged and aged inside being infused with your, you're not like even like peeing in a bottle and aging it outside of your body. Inside when it loops and loops, it's aging inside you being infused with your own cosmic energy. And I think that's where the immortality also comes from because then it's like, you're never diluting your blood with juices, with outside sources, you, with distilled water, with fruit juice, cucumber juice, or whatever. Your urine is aging inside you and those stem cells are getting multiplied in number and regenerating your organs, re-cleaning your organs. And I think that's when the immortality also comes from, because it's like, if you are a 50 year old breatharian, then you're drinking the 50 year old aged urine every day. <laughs> That's what it means. Like if you haven't eaten at all, and if you are 50 years old, like I know elitamelamine uh, breatharian uh, doesn't eat or drink um, at all for um, I think the past two years. I think he's on the journey for 20 years, but in the past two years, he doesn't consume any food, any juice, any liquid. And so he's looping his own urine inside him for two years. It's like every day he's drinking two years old aged urine. And he claims that he's mortal now, which I believe because, I mean, you're multiplying so many stem cells inside you, regenerating your organs you know, living off of the cosmic energy. It's out there. It's possible. What's his name? Elita Melami. Let me write it down. You can follow his um, YouTube channel. He has um, very good videos, very explanatory, long videos. Um, he definitely changed my life. Like, I never thought it was possible to live without food and liquid but he, he's being the example. And there's so many other people too, Jazz Mohin. Um, I know quite a couple of um, YouTubers, Yo, uh, Yogini, I forgot her name, um, but yeah, there's many out there. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> so what else? Do you guys have any other questions? I'm going through the comments to see if I missed anything, but. Hi, Kaylee. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Hey, we just went to play tennis, so yeah. <laughs> now we're back. <laughs> Do you want to share your experience a little bit, Kaylee? I know you are on like liquids for a long time and you, you've experimented with Oren therapy. What has been your experience like? Yeah, I actually haven't done Oren therapy yet, but um, yeah. I've done lots of juicing i've been vegan for nine years and then six years ago found raw foods and i was doing like ayurveda for like a brief time before the raw foods and i just felt so bad with ayurvedic foods i felt like because i was trying like the kitri and like my my personality or body was like vata and supposed to do really bad with raw foods um so but i was very open to trying it and then I just started to feel better and better. Um, and I've done lots of different fasting. Um, I've done lots of long juice fasts. I've done like 144 days, money different, like 60, 66 day juices, 
I think like a 90 day one as well. I mostly live on liquids, to be honest. And then it's like less common that I then eat. And I think through doing that, I started to feel better and better. It took a while to feel like the feeling of feeling good and energized from fruits and juices. Sometimes you feel worse with it because it's like pulling up so much old stuff and stirring up a lot of toxins and emotions. And um, especially if your elimination channels aren't open. Um, I really struggled with my skin for a while, which is similar to you. Um, and I'd been on um, pharmaceuticals for topical steroids for eczema um, for like 14 years. So that was a really hard um, challenge for me at the time, but through like all the hydrating fruits and juices, my skin is normally like perfect when I'm like fully sticking to this. But um, in the past, like two weeks, uh, I started to try to incorporate a little bit more foods to see how I, my body would do because my weight was dropping and I felt so much worse having fats. <laughs> it's like, was really, really powerful. I think the cleaner your body gets, the more you get like the strong signals of like, and it wasn't a physical reaction. My digestion was fine. Actually, my skin was fine. It was like the emotional difference. I felt so much less connected to myself. And I felt um, I felt like old, heavy emotions coming like, like almost like fear and just a lot of like weird emotional things and thoughts that I knew weren't my actual thoughts because it's not anything I normally think, but I could see how much, like how the food was just such a powerful way to um, sort of like imprint and like raise or lower our, vib our vibration um, through what we eat or don't eat as Jason likes to say. So um, it's funny, okay. it's like all this, oh, sorry. Did you want to say something? Um, but yeah, I, I really, the power of fruit juices and fruits have been amazing for me and I have not tried Orin therapy yet. So I will have to report back on that um, when I do. And you've definitely inspired me with that. I just, I keep having thoughts in my brain of like, oh my gosh, you're already such a weirdo from everybody else in society. Like how much further do you want to take this? But tell everyone about it. <laughs> <laughs> tell everyone about it. You have to embrace your weirdness. That's the beauty of it. Don't yes. have to start with it though. You can ease into it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make it a nor norm, a normal thing. I mean, it, it should may be take a while. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I have so many friends who are like now, like 16 years old on the urine therapy groups who are doing this fasting, looping, and everything. I mean, the new generation is coming strong, you know, they're so the open. Rainbow souls. Yeah, rainbow souls, absolutely. And thank you so much, Kaylee, for sharing your experience because I think it answers so many questions. What happens with cooked foods when you eat them is just, it becomes harder to process the emotions because when you're an empty vessel and when your energy channels open, there might, I mean, there might be a fire outside and you might still be happy inside. Like, yeah, it's, you know, it's the levels of joy and peace and fulfillment that you feel on a every single moment basis is like it's just the best thing ever you feel like you don't need anything like you really need so little in life and you realize that more and more like I think the further you go on the path and you feel like so rich and so fulfilled from just like being and like I can just be sitting and doing nothing and I'm like so happy so <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely you, you become just so strong like any emotion that you might be coming through it just comes and goes without getting blocked in the body because you're open it just comes and goes you energy know, you in become, motion. yeah exactly the emotion energy emotion, emotion is energy in motion yeah so when you let the emotion flow through and it doesn't get stuck in the body then it doesn't even affect you you become an observer for your life you're just like um you know, someone in the audience watching your own life. <laughs> it just comes. It's a fun life, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look like you're in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a perception. <laughs> I wish uh, I was. Having said all of that wonderful stuff about raw foods, we all, we have to bear in mind that I think, I think especially people over 40, over 50, sometimes when we're making this transition we have to be gentle with ourselves and allow ourselves time for this transition to happen like it, along the way to moving to be more whole uh, embracing a, a raw food life sometimes we got to go through a little bit of back and forth mm -hmm. and 
And don't be hard on yourself if you need some cooked foods and you didn't have the same story that that Tuche had or that Carly shared today. If you didn't have the same experience when you went to raw foods and you found you had a negative experience or you went through some negative time, I think that stuff happens to many people. And that's normal too. It's, it's not always one way or another way. And it's not always flowers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, it has hard times. And you know, M Miranda was talking about her hard times and, and I think it's just it's just sometimes there are some hard times like we we mm -hmm. have to go through a little bit of hardship mm -hmm. in the transition from cooked foods to moving towards more raw foods right and I encourage people to relax on the weekends you know mm -hmm. practice your your raw foods and if you need to relax or regroup allow yourself a little relax and regroup time with family and community Re relationships are a huge part of it and food is connected there oh, so right. start, if you start to really connect you know drop the raw food sometimes you can break off your relationships and so eating is a part of that too so we don't want to get we don't want to also go the other way and estrange ourselves uh, i think i think the vegan mistake if i have to make a comment toward the vegan lifestyle is is to not accept those that are not there yet mm -hmm. we have yeah, to think, be compassionate yeah. of those that are transitioning and coming this way we're, we're not to be ostracizing people that are not there yet no no not at all it's all about you know embracing where you are knowing where you are and knowing what the next step is for you and asking yourself do you choose to make that next step or not, you know, I see this as a ladder. It's never like while going up the ladder, it's never trying to go up four or five steps above. It's just taking that little step, what's whatever is next. Oh, Jason, could you please lower the sound a little bit because it's doing echo. Oh, sure. Um, so yeah, it's just like taking that little step, what's next, but always and always putting that self-love in you. You know, never quitting that. Like every time you make a decision, ask yourself what's better for your higher self, you know, and choose the self-love path. What's best for you? Not every time you might be able to choose it, but every time you fall, get up, and then you'll fall better, you'll get up better, you'll learn better. So it's the graphic is never like, like this, you know? It's going up down up down up but it's always up you know to change on you you guys both hit on it that you always need to be where you need to be when you need to be period it's the the divine design so every everything that looks like a, a, a barricade in your in your journey you, you you if you start practicing gratitude for that stuff the stuff the the stuff the stuff that really hurts or the, the, I always say like the shit on the ceiling, it, it, emotionally, that's the, that's, the, that's the juicy stuff. That's, not, that's how you know you're getting at it. And um, I, I was 280 pounds at one point and I had every ailment known on the planet, um, you know, emotional, you know, I, I, was a, I was a clogged vessel. But all, that experience, if I didn't have that experience, I wouldn't be where I am right now, right? So it's kind of like the uh, underdog vibration. You, you use these things to um, ascend you, the ascension process. And um, it, it's beautiful. Everyone is, uh, when, when you're aligned with yourself, you're the, you, you are uh, aligned with the universe because the universe is you. You're the one song, the one dance, right? So the universe, we, we think perceptionally is out there. But no, 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 no. The universe is like Tucci was saying, the, the microcosm within the macrocosm. You, you're the universe. So when, you're, when your universe or your body or uh, your physicality is clean and aligned and stuff, you're going to be, uh, the journey gets a lot funner. You know, it gets a lot funner. So um, never judge your experience. You know, never, never judge Never judge yourself or any, any like I'm here and this person's there and this is that and this is that. 
just thank God you you have a you have a body on this planet. You know, it's the it, or or thank yourself because you're part of the uh, you're part of the God consciousness in the in the physical vessel. It's a it's, a, it's an amazing thing. And uh, I, I learned uh, I learned gratitude, the great attitude. And once I started practicing uh, gratitude, the high the highest frequency known on the planet, right? Uh, I have it all. I uh, like Tucci was saying, I have it all. So I have a family, I have friends, I, I have the ability to speak, right? The most simple things are going to bring you so much more, so much more abundance or the perception of abundance. And once you're in that, you're, uh, you're, it's gold. Love you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome, brother. Awesome. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. I had so many things that I wanted to say as you were talking, but now they're all gone. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no no about what you were saying oh yeah but it will come back i just want to answer a couple of the questions here i know pro asked do the red veins in the eyes disappear after detox yes they do because red veins in the white portion of your eye happen due to acidity and when you alkalize your body with more you know alkalizing foods fruits and veggies then it goes away. It becomes wider. If it's gray, it becomes more white. If it's bluish, it becomes more gray first and then white, it cleans up itself. And then um, Rome, Rome made so strong to face my point, emotions. It literally opens you spiritually and mentally. Yes, absolutely. Dr. Gabriel Cousins has a book about it. Uh, it's called Spiritual Nutrition. Spiritual Nutrition. And he says that in order to flow the Kundalini energy up and down through your spine, uh, you, he says you need to stay on the raw foods. And raw foods really help you um, do that. So, but yeah, never, never, ever be in the low vibration of shaming, guilting yourself, like, um, you know, comparing to yourself to anybody else. This is not about that. This is about just becoming your better version. You know, just compare with where you are now to where you were a year ago, you know, a couple of years ago. Did you like do the work to love yourself? Did you love yourself, you know? Sometimes we forget about it. Sometimes we think of other people more than ourselves and we forget about it. But always know that when your cup is full, then you can pour onto other cups. First, you need to love yourself because when you are healthy and happy, then you can share that with others. When your cup is empty, then you'll always be like looking for either somebody else to complete you or somebody else to make you happy. It's not about that. It's filling your own cup first. Once your cup is full, then you can help your community. You can be in service to others. You can spread mm -hmm. happiness uh, because you're full already. So always and always, like the way they do it in the airplanes, you know, when the oxygen levels are low, always put the mask on your face first before you put it on your child. Because if you don't put it on your face, you can't even help your child. It's the same thing in life, you know? If we're not happy and content with ourselves, we can't help our families or friends or our community. We need to do the work on ourselves first, love ourselves, and then so that we can love others even more. Beautiful. <laughs> Blessings. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time today. Wonderful time today, wonderful sharing. I'm glad everyone had questions answered. I'm glad everyone got time to share and love and be in community and be together. And I, I'm doing this every Saturday at two. If people want to come together, if people want to talk, this, these conversations are going on every Saturday. And Sundays at 11, we're doing exercise and movement and breath. So it's always on this channel. Do you have the link? If you'd like to join again, come again, please. And hopefully we'll have Tuche again and hopefully we'll see Tuche again and uh, and hopefully we'll see some of you others more again as well too. Thank you so much for the time today. That was wonderful Tuche. Thank you so uh, much for, for your sharing you so today. Much, I, I hope you loved your experience here. I loved it. I loved it. Thank you so much for hosting this, you know, for having the platform for me to come and speak. 
Thank you so much. I mean, preparing the presentation yesterday and putting the seven years into one presentation was a little challenging, but it was worth it. And it was like, you know, movie films going in front of my eye. <laughs> <laughs> like I did this first and this, this, this. But yeah, it's a journey. Uh, it's never about the destination. It's all about the journey. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your every moment. It's all about the moment. You know, life is an eternal now. So just be in the moment, be in the present moment. Uh, honor your body. Appreciate your body. Be in gratitude. And know that your own water is sterile. It's clean. You can drink it. You can heal it. The answer is within you. Your medicine is within you. You have all the answers. All you need is within. You can create anything with your pineal gland. It's all about changing the internal world so that your external world can change in the way you want. So you have the power. <laughs> wow. I got goosebumps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank John, you. I'm going to have some questions for you next week on sun gazing. And Tucci, I'm going to have some questions for you on semen retention. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a big subject. So bring your A game. Okay, cool, man. Cool. <laughs> Awesome, man. I would love to talk about it because it's also the same for women. You know, men lose their energy when they lose their semen. M women lose their energy when they're on their periods. But when you lighten up your diet, your periods even go away. Or you Ooh, can something to talk about next week. <laughs> There's so much to we'll, talk about. We can we'll get, get at it. Next week. Yeah. Let's save some for next week. Yeah, okay. right. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Namaste.